good evening, Recovery Alive. Let's stand up and worship together. darkest but your light is greater you light our way God you light our way the hill is rising you're rising higher with power to save with power to save keep hope Strong. 
praise you, God. Amen. If y'all, if y'all could stay here and um, do something completely unplanned here, uh, <laughs> you feel the power of the Holy Spirit. You feel the power of the Holy Spirit in this place. Yeah. This is not at all what we planned. Okay, so. I'm just going to keep the band up here. If that's, is that okay? Yeah, just for a minute. There's just so much to celebrate tonight. Amen? God's doing so many good things. And there's so many people in a battle. We need to remind each other that God is good. And He is working. And He works in the 30 days, and he works in the 60 days, and in the 90 days, and the six months, and the nine months. And so I, I just want the people who are going to give out the chips just to come up right now, just come right here. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it just a little different. But what I want to do is if you are celebrating a year or more of sobriety, we want to celebrate you tonight. If you're celebrating a year or more sobriety from whatever your struggle is, it's going to be, it's going to take a minute to get these coins and get them to you, but I want you to come right now, and I want us to get excited about the people who are celebrating more than a year of sobriety in this place. Come on. But I want you to come up here, and I want you to stay. I want you to stay up here. I want you to stay up here. Look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Amen. Amen. Can we praise God? Come on, let's give it up. Come on. Now listen. Yeah. If you're celebrating nine months, I want you to come in front of these folks. I know we're going to get a little packed up here, but if you're celebrating nine months, come on up here. If you're celebrating nine months of sobriety, come on up here. Anybody celebrating nine months? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want you to come up here if you're celebrating six months of recovery. Six months. Anybody celebrating six months? Come on, six months. Six months. Anybody celebrating six months of recovery? Anybody? Six months. Marco, six months right here, man. Six months. Six months. Six months. Six months. Six months right here. Six months. All right, 90 days. Who celebrating 90 days of recovery? Come on, come on, right here, up front. 90 days. I want the 90 days right here. 90 days right here. 90 days, 90 days, 90 days. Come on, 90 days right here, 90 days. Whew. You're celebrating 60 days. I want you to come right here, right up to the front. 60 days. Who's got 60 days of recovery? 60 days, 60 days, 60 days. Come on, give it up for 60 days of recovery, 60 days. I know it's messy tonight, but I want to make sure we get this. Jerry, 60 days, baby. Come on, 60 days. All right, if you're celebrating 30 days, I want you to front and center. 30 days right here. 30 days, 30 days, 30 days right here. Thirty days. Come on, thirty days. Give it up, thirty days. Now I know for some of y'all this is like maybe a little uncomfortable. Can we just can we just take a look at these people that are at the altar right now?
Now this is what the Bible says. The Bible says we're the body of Christ. If one part suffers, we all suffer. But if one part is doing pretty good, shouldn't we celebrate that? Yeah? No. But what I really want to do is this, is I want to give special attention to the 30 and the 60 and the 90. I don't think we do enough to support what you guys are doing. So it's kind of neat how it worked out. All the people with a year or more, they're pushed out a little bit. But these guys, you guys, you guys have been doing it. So I want us to push in just a little bit. I don't want to get all weird or nothing, but just push in. And I want us to pray. I want us to form, I want us to form a big hug around these 30 and 60 and 90 dayers. I want you all to reach your hands out to them. We're going to believe that 30 will be 60. Amen? We're going to believe that 60 will be 90. Amen? We're going to believe that 90 is going to be six months. Amen? We're going to believe that six months is going to be nine months. Amen? Nine months is going to be a year. Amen? These folks are going to have a year, 18 months, two years. Can we believe for that together? Can we believe for that? Reach out your hands. Let's pray for these folks. And Father, we are so grateful. We ask God right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you would give them confidence, not in their own ability. They'd let go of all that stuff. But they would believe because, Lord, they see the testimonies around them of those who have done it. They've gone before. They have made a way. They have forged a path. They are on a journey, God. And there are trailblazers who've gone before them and they're going to walk in their footsteps. Paul, you say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And so we want to do that. Christ, we want to imitate you. But there are people around us we can watch and say, look what they've done. If they did it, I can do it. Thank you for those who are celebrating a year, two years, three years, five years. Thank you for the work you've done in them. But God, I want to pray right now for those who are just starting their journey. They would feel it's possible. With you, all things are possible. Yes. We just reject and rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. He has no authority in this place. He has no authority, and we rebuke his lies, even now that are speaking to them and saying, you'll never make it. A year, are you crazy? You'll never make it. That journey of a year starts tonight and tomorrow and the next day. You give him courage to do that next right thing. Because we trust in God. We trust in God. We trust in God. Come on, man, let's do this. We trust in God because he never fails. He never fails. We want to say a big amen, and we want to blow this song up one more time, and we want to praise you in this place. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Yeah. Come on, let's praise him. trust in God. Come on, let's shout it out. I trust in God. Come on, one more time. I trust in God. Let's shout it out. I trust in God. I trust in God. Praise you, Lord. Come on, let's give a shout of praise to God. Come on, thank you, Lord. We worship you. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It's you. You have the victory in this place. Amen, amen. All right, if you've got your coin, you can have. Let's see. The rest of y'all, find something, give a hug or a handshake and a high five before you have a seat in this place.
Welcome everyone to Recovery Alive. Woo! It's the best place to be tonight, isn't it? It doesn't matter if you had the hardest week or the best week, it's still the best place to be tonight, right? Yep. My name is Jessica. Nice to meet you. And I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. And I'm finding victory over codependency and lack of trust. Hey, let's take a minute and welcome our online people. Welcome online. Hey, and if you're in here and you have a Facebook page, you know what? I want you to get out your phone and I want you to share it because there's probably someone who's had a hard week that might be on your friends that needs to hear this tonight. So let's pick it up. Let's go to Temple City Recovery Alive or Temple City Church. And I want you to share this onto your page so that there are other people that can see this, okay? I um, want to go through just a few announcements with you guys. So I'm repping my, my 5K shirt. We got our 5K tomorrow. Who's ready? I did, I did some 5K um, training right before I came up here because, um, John, I love you. And I love how you switch things up, and you, you let me um, train as I was running across to get to the chick monk. So thank you for the pre-training for tomorrow. Um, if you have not picked up your shirt, make sure that you are there early tomorrow at 7 a.m. So set your alarms, maybe even set them right now, so that you get there early so you can get your shirts. Because they're going to shut down, like, parking around uh, 745, so you need to make sure that you're there early to get your shirts and sign up, okay? Um, also, if you are not signed up, there's still room for you. We would love to have you join us. It's pretty awesome, you know, where we had a whole group of people here tonight. When we're walking as a group of people together, there's power in numbers, right? And so we get to come together and we get to talk about recovery and how powerful that is. So we would love to have you join us. If you are new tonight, we want to share with you a little bit about how Recovery Alive works. And we want you to join us in that room back there. It says New Beginnings. So if you can join us, we'd love to tell you about how this, gets, how this got started and how we can um, give you the information to be successful in your recovery. A few other things is um, we have some spots in our schedule to hear your stories. So it's really great to hear people from other churches, um, but we want to hear people from this church and their testimony. So if you have a testimony about how the Lord has worked in your life, we want to hear that. We want to support you. We want to celebrate with you. So um, what you can do is you can send um, your testimony, and if you need some help with how to formulate that, we'd love to get you that information. Um, you can come see me in the cafe area afterwards, and I can point you in the direct direction for that. Um, ushers, if you will come, we're going to say a prayer over the offering tonight. Um, Recovery Live is a free resource, but we don't run for free. This takes time. This takes effort. And so we really would appreciate your support. If you're not able to give, we understand, but we would love for you to volunteer as well. Giving is not just monetary. It can be of your time as well. So we would love to see you serve. Um, I would like everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. Father God, we thank you that you are a good, good father and that you celebrate with us in heaven when we are able to meet those milestones of recovery and you're rooting for us because you love us and you care for us. And so, Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this time. Lord, we ask that you would bless the offering, Lord, that it would go to um, exactly what it needs to build your kingdom, to help our community to seek recovery, Lord, and to find you. We thank you that you um, go before us in all that you do, and we're seeking you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I'm just trying to wear her out so I can win. They're laughing at me, thinking he can win. He doesn't look like a runner. Okay, that's cool. Um, hey, God is doing good things, amen? Um, I do want to tell you all, uh, 
we have this really cool opportunity. I'm going to forget that grief share slide uh, up behind me. We're doing these things called intensives, and we did this reboot program. It was fantastic for vets and first responders. Um, it's going to be ending in the next couple of weeks, and right behind it, we're going to do this thing called grief share. Grief, how many have heard of grief share before? Yeah, gr grief share is this really beautiful thing that is more of an intensive curriculum around dealing with grief and loss. And so if that's something that you have suffered recently, grief and loss, or maybe not so recently, you're still working through that. Process groups are great. Our people groups are great. Uh, this ministry is wonderful. But sometimes we just need a little bit of extra instruction, a little bit of extra encouragement. Um, this is a wonderful program that we're going to be running Thursday night starting this coming Thursday. Uh, it is going to be in Mobile Unit 2 on Thursday night, uh, 6.30. We're going to be doing this around the holidays because sometimes the holidays is the toughest time to deal with grief. And so if that's something you're interested in, you can just simply show up Thursday night or let us know if you're interested. What's that? What? Don't argue with me. So like I said, it'll be October 12th, <laughs> the following Thursday. Okay. That's what I said. And when we were wrong, promptly admit it is in the step somewhere. It's my bad. Okay. October 12th, the following Thursday. So um, anyway, it's a really wonderful program. Uh, the loudmouths back there are going to be running it, and uh, it's going to be fantastic and powerful. <laughs> um, yeah, so can they see you and talk to you if they got any questions? Are you going to be mean to them like you are with me right now? <laughs> You'd be nice to them. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> we have some amazing, amazing victories going on in this church, in this ministry. Um, we want to give you as many of those victories as we can. We want you guys to hear the good stuff that's going on. We're closing up step one, which is the power of weakness. Let's take a look at this step. Step one, we admitted we were powerless and that our lives have become unmanageable. Romans 7, 18 says, I want to do what's right, but I can't. Um, and this is our core question tonight. Let's look at that core. What is something in your recovery you can be proud of tonight? Um, I just want you to see that no matter where you are in your recovery journey, tonight is really going to be about no matter where you are in your recovery journey, we want you to find a place where you can get excited about what God is doing in your life. Whether you just showed up, that's a victory, amen? Whether you're celebrating 30 days, that's a victory. Whether it's a year, two years, if you used three hours ago, but you're at a meeting, that's a victory. Amen? That's a, that's a victory. And so I'm going to do it. Show of hands. How many of y'all beat yourself up more than anybody else beats you up? Yeah, look at, look at all the hands, right? Let's stop that. Let's, let's say I'm going to brag on God tonight and what he's doing in this vessel. That can, I'll be real spiritual and say it that way. Is that okay? Can we do it that way? Um, and we want to get excited about that, and we want to show you um, someone tonight who is, man, he's, he's doing it. He keeps showing up. God is doing a work in his life. He, he's got this thing that we call grit. Grit is something that really is pivotal to making it in recovery, and it's that thing that just says, I'm not going to quit. You can push me down. You can knock me over, but I'm going to get up. Uh, you knock me down 100 times, I'm going to get up 101 times, right? It's grit. This kid's got grit. Well, he's not a kid. He's getting kind of old. He's got grit. <laughs> You're getting up there, brother. I want you to hear from Braxton. We get up for Braxton. He's going to come up and share a little bit of his story. <laughs> come on, Braxton. Thank you, John. Hey, my name is Braxton. I am sincerely a faithful believer in Jesus Christ, and I would like to pray for a minute before I start my testimony. By your heads, please. Dear Lord, we come to you today just to give me the peace of mind and the strength to get through this testimony. 
We ask that I give people the words to Christ that they need to hear. While I share my testimony, we ask that you give hope and encouragement, not only to myself, but to those who need to hear it. In your mighty name, amen. I have been delivered from alcohol addiction, drug addiction, suicidal ideations and attempts, and self-esteem disorders. I currently struggle with forgiveness issues, trust issues, self-worth, cigarettes, grief, abandonment, rejection, anger, and mental illness. Okay. On Saturday morning, November 9th, 1991, early at 5.02 a.m., I was what was called a miracle baby. Me, Braxton. Of course. At birth, I was tangled in my umbilical cord with it wrapped tightly around my neck three and a half times. No wonder why I was considered a miracle baby. From that, from the time that I was four and a half years old, I experienced abuse from my parents. Repeated, it repeated and escalated Repeated and escalating abuse eventually ended up putting me in the hospital. At this time, at this time, I didn't know what I, what struggling meant, but looking back, I felt abandoned, unloved, and rejected. I was put in foster care once I was out of the ICU. At five years old, the father and foster, the father of the foster family would begin sexually abusing me. When I realized that I, it wasn't my fault, I reported to the, the family to DSS with, with my school counselor. From then on, I struggled with flashbacks of the abuse pornography, and my struggle with drugs and alcohol were only just the beginning. I was 12 years old when I met what was to be my high school sweetheart at the time. And we very quickly, very quickly started a central relationship. I was caught up in the wrong habits, which ultimately ended up with me locked up in juvenile detention. At this time, Sarah was pregnant with my daughter, Samantha. November 2nd, 2007, my daughter, Samantha, was born. Most of her life was spent with her mother until I was set free from time served. Samantha was born with a parable sized brain tumor in the right side of her brain. November 8, 2013, Samantha lost her battle with her brain tumor. Exactly a year later, on November 8, 2014, my fiance at that time, who was the mother of my, my child, Samantha, committed suicide the day after her birthday and the day before mine. Once again, I felt rejected, abandoned, unloved, and suicidal. This was the start of a very dark time in my life. Suicide was always on my mind and I had not stopped, I had stopped taking all my medications. I would drink myself to sleep to mask the pain. I would burn myself on purpose. I even tried to get run over by, train, by a train to get, to mask whatever I was going through. Matthew 11, 25 through 28 says, At this time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by the Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those 
to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But God, when I turned 24 years old, I became a Christian and eventually got baptized for the first time. Yes, I know I may have strayed away from God time and time again, but God always pulls me back to his life and makes me remember that Jesus died for our sins. Right now, I'm currently working my 12 steps of my recovery at Temple City Recovery Alive. John, John 3, 16 through 17 happens to be my life first. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only son, that sh whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son, son into the world to condemn the world, but to have, but to save him through, but to save the world through him. For I know that Jesus shed his blood and died on the cross, rose from the dead on the third day, and forgave not just my sins, but everyone's sins. In my story, given over my sinful desires, I found myself in a prodigal son situation. When prompting, with prompting, with the prompting of the Holy Spirit, I came back to the foot of the cross. Thank God that His faithful love endures forever. Thanks for letting me share. A lot of victory tonight, amen? Wednesday, I talked about uh, football, and I'm going to talk about football tonight because it's football season, and it's on my mind a little bit, if that's okay. Some of you are like, no, it's not. Too bad. I got a microphone, and you're just going to have to deal with it. All right. But I, now I'm going to go back into the old days when I used to play football back in the day, leather helmets, all that kind of stuff, yeah? Um, I used to play college <clears throat> football back in the day, and... Um, High school, college, all the football that I played, um, football people and football coaches say the same thing over and over and over again, don't they? Have you ever watched a football coach press conference? They could be recorded and just played over and over and over again. There's a script that they all use. Am I right? Any football people out there, you know what I'm talking about? You watch a press conference, it's like they say the same stupid thing over and over again. Now, if somebody, if a reporter says, uh, you guys, you know, you made the playoffs. You guys, you, you got your eyes on the Super Bowl this year. You're going to win the championship. What does the coach say? We're just focused on the next game. Yeah, that's it. We're just focused on that. Yeah, Amber, what's up with the voice? Is that how coaches talk? Okay, all right, cool. We're just focused on the next game. Next game. It's all about the next game. We're just keeping our eye on the next game. We're not thinking about the championship, right? And our coaches would tell us, don't even think about the win. Don't even think about the game. Just think about the what? No, just think about the next play. Oh, my gosh. Security. Oh, my gosh. And that's what I I better get out of this really quick. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about this idea that a lot of us have a bullseye when it comes to recovery, a target that we're shooting for that looks like sobriety. It looks like not just sobriety, but sometimes it looks like a year of sobriety. Sometimes it looks like getting our house back or our marriage back. It, it looks like having uh, things the way we used to have it. Man, I, I just want to get back to normal, right? Or, man, I got kicked out and now I want to get back into the house. And we have these goals. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're here and you want to get to this place where you get back to where you were before, maybe a little bit further along. I want to get my job back. I want to get a car. I want to get my finances where they need to be. And I want to be that coach tonight and say, stop focusing on those prizes and think about the next play. You hear what I'm saying? Don't think about the championship. It'll come. Just like the old ball coach will, will tell you, any coach will be like, 
If you concentrate on the championship, you'll lose the play in front of you. But if you focus on the play in front of you, there's a really good chance you're going to win the championship. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so we read these scriptures, these wonderful scriptures about running races. You all know about these scriptures about running races. And we think about the prize that Paul talks about, right? He says, do you not know, in 1 Corinthians 9, that in a race... All the runners run, but only one gets a prize, right? That'll be me tomorrow. All right, so. <laughs> run in such a way as to win the prize. You hear that? Run in such a way as to win the prize. What does that mean to run in such a way? He says, everyone who competes in the game goes into strict training. I bet you most of us have heard that scripture and we think about it in terms of, well, the thing that stands out to us is run to win the prize, but none of us talk about the strict training. We don't memorize that part, the strict training. They do it to get a crown. I'm back in. Amen. Amen. Prize, amen, I like that talk. I'm going for the crown. I don't run like someone running aimlessly. I don't fight like a boxer beating the air. I strike a blow to my body and make it a slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. You see, there's a process that he's talking about. There's a training. There's a focus. There's an every day. Anybody, anybody watch Groundhog's Day? Remember Groundhog's Day with Bill Murray? Remember when he's playing the piano? And he just has day after day where he plays the piano, and you watch him come in the first day, and it's just horrifying. He's chomping on his gum and blowing bubbles. And the next thing you know, he's playing Mozart, right? But it just took day after repeated day after repeated day after repeated day. This is the grind of recovery that many of us don't like to think about or talk about, but that's how you win the prize is in the grind. But I want to tell you this. There are prizes in the grind. There are times to celebrate in the grind. You get what I'm saying? There's places where you can pause and celebrate in the grit and in the hard work, and if you don't pause and do that, you're going to get discouraged. Anybody been discouraged in the grind before? And it's because a lot of times we're going, I still don't have my marriage back. I still don't have that amount of time of sobriety. I still don't got that good job that I had before. I just got that little job that I had before. I want the big job. Why don't you celebrate that you got a job? Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? We want to get excited about these baby steps. Because the baby steps are how you get the prize. Everybody got me? Bill Walsh, a football coach. Yeah, 49, West Coast offense. Concentrate. If you take notes, I'm going to give you this one, okay? I gave Marcos notes about four minutes ago, and he's like, yeah, I can't do that. So anyway, here we go. I love you, Marcos. I'm so sorry. He's codependent no more. He said no. That's a complete sentence. Concentrate, he says. Concentrate on what will produce results rather than on the results. Isn't that good? Concentrate on what will produce results rather than on the results, the process rather than the prize. Focus on the process rather than the prize, and the prize will come. And I don't think most of us get excited about the process. Some, some of us do. Some of you do. Anybody get excited about the process itself? A few of you. I want to read Galatians 6, and I do want to get us moving here, but listen. Galatians 6, Paul talks about fruit. Y'all heard about the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And self-control is a big part of what recovery is about, right? How do you get these fruit? Look at me. 
This is a huge concept. Everybody look at me. Focus. This is, if you don't get this, this, this is everything. You cannot make fruit grow. Do you hear me? You can't produce fruit. No farmer can just pop. There's an apple. He can't do that. He can't manufacture it. He can only make the conditions right for fruit to grow. That's the process. And some of you are like, why? You're talking to your sponsor, and your sponsor's like, get some fertilizer and shovel some... And you're like, but that, what does that have to do with the prize? What does poo have to do with the prize? Little alliteration for the preachers. What does it have to do with the prize? No fertilizer, there's no fruit. You don't shovel the, you don't get the fruit. Am I right? So it's like, you guys are struggling because your sponsors are going like, it's in the grind, and you're like, I'm sick of the grind. They say the grind is how you get the prize. Here's what Paul said. Don't be misled. Don't mock God. He won't be mocked. You will always harvest what you plant. God will not be mocked by shortcuts. By the fat. There, there is no quick and fast way to grow a crop of fruit. Do you get me? It takes time. Anybody ever grown anything? Anything just, I, I told, I've told you this before. The first time I grew cucumbers in the backyard in West, by God, Virginia, I put some cucumber seeds in the ground, and I woke up the next morning, and I was angry because there was nothing coming up out of the ground. That's how ignorant I was. Right? I went, I went outside. I was like, what the heck? I did everything right. Where, what? I need some fertilizer. It did eventually come, but it took time. You got to be patient to be a farmer, amen? Don't be misled. You can't mock the justice of God. You'll always harbor what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their sinful nature, you will harvest something. You'll harvest, but you'll harvest from your sinful nature. Your seeds of sin will harvest some nasty stuff. Has that happened in your life? Maybe that's why you're here. The good news is those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Here it is. Therefore, do not grow tired in doing good. That's the grit. Don't get tired in doing good because at just the right time, Time you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. Who's timing? That stinks, right? You're like, mm, I hate that. But it's his time, not our time. Don't grow weary in doing good. Doing good is all the process. Doing good is the plowing. Doing good is is the planting and doing good is the harvest. But sometimes we think only the good is the harvest. But did you know when you're plowing that stuff up, plowing back in the day was no joke, right? It was an unbelievable task to push that plow behind that mule, man. It was like nothing else out there. The work that that took, giant rocks in that ground. Back when Paul was writing this stuff, man, when you're talking about actually putting seed in the ground, the work it took to do that, when, they're, when you're sweating and you're pulling the old weeds from the old sin out of the ground, you need to celebrate because you're on your way to the prize. You're on your way to the fruit. When you are planting those seeds and your back feels like it's going to be broken and you're planting those rows, you need to stop and celebrate because you can put seeds in the ground in the first place. Amen? 
You need to celebrate when you're out there and you're, you're doing more of that weeding and you're pulling that stuff up. And man, I used to pick rocks out in Moose Lake, Minnesota. I remember we would plant out in the, the where's Pee Wee? Yeah, we had to pick rocks back in those days. Do you still, where's Pee Wee Creek? He, he'd know. Where's that, where's that man? Yeah, you got to pick rocks right out in the field. You ever do that before? And you're just piling these rocks out and my back would be sore and the heat would be hitting me. And I, you got to celebrate in those moments, man. You got to go, hey, on my way to the harvest. So where are you at right now? Where are you at right now in your understanding of the process? In other words, do you know that what you are doing is leading you to the prize? How much confidence do you have that what you did today is just as much worth celebrating as when you get to the promised land. Do you hear what I'm saying? Some of you don't get it. That you showed up tonight is worth celebrating. Every r next right thing you do is worth celebrating. Nobody's going to be there to do it, so you better do it yourself. Somebody told me today about a choice they made that would have spiraled them in the past into some pretty nasty stuff. They made the right decision. Nobody was looking. Nobody was watching. Nobody gave them a hand clap. And they stopped and they said, whew, thank you, Jesus. Where could I have been if I would have made the wrong choice? Where am I today because I made the right choice? They stopped and paused and we celebrated together because they wanted to share it because they recognized it was a victory. Do you recognize that there's some things you can celebrate tonight? And I want to do that. I want you to surrender tonight. We're going to pass out our surrender chips. You're pushing. Some of you guys are so full of self-hate. You're so critical of yourselves. You go like, that's fine, John, but I keep screwing up, and I, I don't have a whole lot to celebrate tonight. Then you're not listening because at least you're sitting in a chair at a flipping church on a Friday night. That's incredible. Who does that? At least you're watching online on a Friday night. You could have been doing anything. You could have been running around with that 40. You could have been running around with those people. You could be doing all that nonsense, but you're here on a Friday night at church. What's wrong with you people? You want it, and you're grinding, and you want to win. And I want to celebrate you. Because it's worth celebrating. There's a young man in this crowd that I kind of gave up on. I can't help but look at this guy. Where is he? Luis, you stand up, buddy. Come on, buddy. Is it okay? Come here. Come here. I told you it might happen. Come on, man. Give this guy a hand. This guy. Come on. This dude's worth celebrating. Home, home, homeless. Yeah? Addicted. Got chance after chance after chance. I lost hope. I was like, man, Gaylord was bringing him. I was like, Gaylord, dude, sometimes people are a bad ROI. Sorry. Bad return on your investment. I said that, didn't I? Where is Gaylord, didn't I? He's like, I believe. I believe in this guy. I believe in this guy. He kept bringing him. He kept coming. Yeah. You want to say something? Come on. Yes. Hey, my name is Luis. I'm an alcoholic and an addict. Um, one thing, hi, one thing I want to say, don't ever lose hope. There's always a chance. If you do the next right thing, you can always make it, man. I'm two years clean and sober. One thing I want to say, I 
want to give it out to Jesus and to God. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. And that's for sure. And for that, for, I will forever be grateful. For the people that's been there in my life, everybody, like Marita, Gaylor, Joyce, Jim, everybody. My mom and my dad. And to the people that's been there too, you know, like everybody, this church, all the people, I just want to be grateful and show gratitude because you got to stay humble, man. You got to stay humble and take it one day at a time. That's all I have to share. Thank you. Amen. The grind every day just keeps showing up. That's what Louis said. He just kept showing up. He just kept showing up. He kept showing up. And his mom was here. That's pretty cool. Would you all stand with me? We're going to have the band come out. Man, I, I just wanted to do that tonight. I just wanted to celebrate. But I didn't want to celebrate with just a few people to say, hey, these guys, man, these guys with all this sobriety, let's get excited about these guys. We all got something to celebrate, I promise you. And like I said, if all it is is that you showed up tonight, it's just as much worth celebrating as anything else. In fact, here's what the Bible says. There is more celebrating in heaven when one sinner comes to repentance. That the angels go crazy. And that's not necessarily, when I read that, that's not just about like, that salvation moment, it's like every time one sinner repents, the heavens go nuts. You say, man, I'm condemned. No, no. As soon as you say, God, I need help, the heavens explode with excitement and joy and celebration. Amen? That's all you got to do. So let's get these, uh, oh, they're already up there. You guys are fast. We're going to do a bunch of stuff. We're going to celebrate. And we're going to surrender. And we're going to celebrate our surrender. We're going to celebrate that we can surrender. We're going to celebrate that surrender is possible. We're going to surrender the fact, not my will, but his be done. And then celebrate the fact that when his will is done, we win the prize. Amen? And that you just got to do the next thing. That's it. Don't have to think about all the stuff you've lost trying to get it back. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. Amen? Can we just celebrate the next right thing? I want you to surrender to the next right thing, but when you come to this altar, I want you to believe that God is proud of his son and daughter who is at this altar, and he's celebrating. If you are repenting of something inside of you that you you go, man, I got to start dealing with this thing. The heavens are celebrating. If you're going, you know what? I screwed up and I hurt somebody and you come to this altar, the heavens are celebrating. If you show up and sit in these chairs for the first time, the heavens are celebrating. Here, I just want you to get excited tonight. Come hit your knees and know that God is proud of his child. Father, every head bowed. Father, every person that's in this room is worth celebrating. They are made in your very image and they're worth celebrating. Some of them have, re have received a lie that they're less than because of what they do and that's a lie. They are more than because of who they are and whose they are. They are more than conquerors. They are children. They're more than just slaves and servants. They're yours. And I pray that even now they would just start to feel the power of your image inside of them. And, and they want to celebrate who they are tonight. And they want to feel the, the celebration of a God who loves them as they come and they bow and they surrender and say, God, I'm yours. I want to get in line with that. I want to get in line with the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. I know your mercies are new every morning. If you're in this place right now and you've been dealing with some condemnation, you've been beating yourself up, put your hand in the air and say, man, I've been beating myself up. I've been beating myself up. I've been beating myself up. If your hand is in the air, I want you to come to this altar and surrender that right now. Just come on, come on. If you're in this place right now, you got something going on in your life, 
You know you need to surrender. There's some kind of struggle. You, maybe you're bitter and you're resentful and you're, you're feeling like all that junk is inside you. You want to get rid of that stuff. I want you to raise your hand and say, that's me. I've, I've got some stuff in my life. And then I want you to come right up to this altar and I want you to surrender that stuff tonight. Grab a surrender chip and just surrender that stuff. I want you to surrender right now to, to the idea that God says that you are worthy because Jesus says you're worthy. Maybe you're in this place right now and you need to surrender to the idea that the person who hurts you needs forgiving. You're carrying resentment and bitterness and anger. If, if uh, Just every head bowed, every eye closed, you're out there and you have some resentment. You have, you're holding on to some anger and some bitterness, even maybe with somebody next to you or somebody who passed away or somebody who you haven't talked to in a long time. I want you to just raise your hand and right now just say, I'm struggling with some resentment. I'm struggling with some anger, some bitterness. I want you to come to this altar if that's you. I don't want you to, to, to leave here the same way you came in. Just come and get a surrender chip. Come and bow a knee and say, God, I want to get rid of this stuff. And, and God's going to begin to, to just speak to you that you are worth celebrating because you've made this choice to surrender. We're going to sing this song that he will do it again, that God is faithful. He is faithful and that he's going to continue to do that good work that he began in you. Come to this altar. Let's surrender our lives to him and let's be victorious. Let's live in the victory that God has for us every single day. Let's come to this altar. Come get a surrender chip and surrender to Jesus tonight. Come on. Walking around these walls I thought by now they fall But you have never felt me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faith
Amen. Amen. Hey, usually I kind of have this like uh, generic last call for the last chip, you know, but I just feel like the Holy Spirit might be leading me to like a specific struggle because I just see it in the work I do in recovery and the work that I do in counseling. I guess in my own life, I've definitely seen it. That it's almost like it doesn't matter how much evidence can be piled up in front of you. You think you're failing. It's almost like you just are determined. Some part of you says, it doesn't matter. I'm a failure and I'm always going to fail. And it doesn't matter what I do. I'm just failing. You could be on, you could, you could be making stride after stride, but you still think you're failing. And I want you to surrender your feelings to the truth. That's what this coin is for, this chip. And maybe it's not anybody in this place. But if there's someone in this place that that describes you, that you just don't believe, you're having a very hard time believing that you are succeeding and that God can do anything good, I want you to come up and get this chip. This one's for you. You feel like a failure. You feel like you can't get there. I want you to surrender the truth, and, and I want you to believe you're doing better than you think you're doing. Right here. Yeah, here we go. Come on, man. Is there anybody else you've been in a tug of war with God over this stuff? Right here, come on. How about that? Come on, let's praise God for that. Come on. Here we go. Come on, come on, guys. Let's get excited. Let's get excited. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. I got another one. Come on, praise God. Right here, right here, right here. That's you. You're doing better than you think you are. You're doing better. Are they doing better? Come on, let's go. Are you doing better? You're here. He's, he's here. They're doing better than he thinks he is. Amen? Nice. Let's celebrate, man. Can we celebrate? One more time. Let's celebrate. Let's get excited. Come on. God's doing good things. Yeah. All right, guys. I, Marcus, I don't know if you can put up the core question again. I want you to get in your groups. Can we please get into some groups and talk about that we're proud of ourselves. Oh, Christians can't say that. I can boast in the Lord. What is something you're recovering that you can be proud of tonight? Is there something you can talk about and say, man, I'm, 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 you can use grateful if you really need to do it. I'm grateful that God's done this in my life. Talk about that in your people groups tonight. Would you do that? If you're brand new, this is your first time on a Friday night, we've got a group right back here for newcomers. If you go right back into that second door right there in the middle, newcomers would love for you to come on back there. It's called New Beginnings. Uh, we're going to give you a little one-time run through what Recovery Live is all about. Um, and uh, we can't wait to see you at the 5K. Let's go ahead and close the serenity prayer. Will you guys join me? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so I may be reasonably happy in this and supremely. Amen, amen. God bless you all. There's chips up here if you need a surrender chip.